phantasm? Is it a nightmare? Phantasm. Is it an illusion? Phantasm. What the fuck is up, Gorehounds? And you are listening to the Phantasm Podcast. With me as always, the doctor is fucking in, Vincent West. How we doing? And I am Corey Gore Christ. We're doing another uh, thrilling episode. This is actually the first uh, Carpenter we've busted out on this on this podcast, which is pretty crazy, actually. Out of what we've done, this is number seven, and this is the first Carpenter film we've watched this far. I'll applaud you for picking a rare one, as uh, he's my favorite director. Um, yeah, this is this is gonna be fun. I mean, he's he's still got the mantle right now. I mean, he's the living, the living uh, master of horror, you know. Besides George, I mean, I, besides George Romero, of course. The uh, person to ask, I suppose, but I, yeah, I think he's it. I, I mean, you think, had you had a lot of people say, oh, he's overrated, way that they're no, they don't know, they don't know his catalog. Uh, surprisingly, there's been more remakes of John Carpenter films than I think anything. I mean, there's a remake of Assault on Precinct 13, The Thing, The Fog. Uh, well, The Thing was a remake. Right. But it was a remake of a remake of a remake when they made the new one. Correct. And, right, uh, but they still borrowed from John, yeah. Yeah, that's, that, that's the one they remade was the John yeah, one. Yeah, because the, the John remade The Thing from another planet. It's from, like, yeah, from, from like, the 50s world. or some yeah. shit. Um, which is, you know... Which is awesome, because it's actually on... But Halloween. The original is on in Halloween. Right. Tommy. Uh, yeah. Tommy Doyle's watching. That's it. right. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, uh, so and I, I had a bowl cut like that as a kid. <laughs> as a kid. The kid That's on the beach. Nice. If you're watching it, Adrian Barbeau's child in this film. Don't know his name, but I had a bowl cut just like that. So oh, if I you should. want to see me at six or seven years old, there I am. And we are watching The Fog. John Carpenter's The Fog. Which is pretty cool. This was made right after Halloween. Yep. And it has Jamie Lee Curtis's mother in the film. Yep. Janet Lee, which Janet was the Lee. shower scene woman from Hitchcock's Psycho. Right. And she's in this film. The original film. Scream Queen. Yeah, she's in this film with Jamie Lee Curtis, as well as Tom Atkins, which is fucking Halloween 3. Fucking goodness, man. I love Tom Atkins. He's a... Stop it! <laughs> Stop it! Take off the mask! <laughs> um, fucking Awesome. Uh, Hal Holbrook is also in this film, which is he's in Creep Show and the and Fletch lives, and the crate, which is a yeah. Comedy that I love. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, Hal Holbrook's great. Yeah, uh, this is a pretty ensemble cast for its time, and uh, you know this is just a great movie. I haven't seen this. movie. The gentleman since I was here speaking kid. to them on the beach, the old ship captain, he was on a comedy that I watched as a kid with Ricky Schroeder called Silver Spoons. Huh? And he was the father. He was that guy is awesome. I cannot think of his name. That guy is. Uh, <laughs> He's he's great, great actor. And uh, Adrian Barbosa in this too, as it says, she's uh, from Swamp Thing and Escape from New York. Which you John know, Creep Show dated also. For, John dated yeah. for a while, yeah. And she was in Creep Show as well. So I mean, uh, it's, it's a pretty John Carpenter cast in this film. I mean, it's, very much. It's awesome. We're just missing the Kurt, and you know, we'd be gravy. But this film was also shot. Uh, give another shout out, even though I'm not getting shot back. From him. But I'm uh, going to give another shout out to Sean Clark that does the Horace Hollowed Grounds. I learned from watching the Horace Hollowed Grounds on Halloween 3 that Halloween 3, which was not a Carpenter film, but Carpenter did the score for her, as we both know. Right. But it was this was shot in the same part of California. And look, there's John right there. No shit. John is the caretaker of the church for Hal Holbrook. That's amazing. He looks like a total badass, too. He's just you know, <laughs> cheaping on his cigarette, and in a church, he's cheaping on a cigarette. <laughs> there now, he is. Uh, how'd you like the Lost Themes, too? You enjoy it? You said you've been listening to it. Man, it's, it, it actually is better than the first one. Really? Yeah, I really, really Is this like one more it. like bonus track stuff that wasn't on the first no, one? No, no, no. You know, it says Lost Themes, but they're not connected to anything. Oh, okay. 
I think it's things that he wanted to use maybe in stuff or for something that never happened. And of course, here's Tom Atkins. Is that? Well, no, that's that's, that's how. Howl, Howl, yeah. yeah. He's got a mustache. And there's John. Wow. <laughs> that is John. He's young as shit. It's pretty awesome. Think about growing me a stash like that. You should. You should get the the Howl stash right there too. And this movie came out in 1980. This makes John Carpenter what? He's he's only 68. He's not an old, you know. He's a badass. <laughs> what a career. Yeah. And only 68. That ain't shit, you know. Hal is surprisingly really young in this. At least he looks pretty young to me. He's aged well. <clears throat> But yeah, you got the uh, church scene. So he was he was 32 in this film, which is pretty cool. Where he's discovering the pirate grimoire, yeah. or what I consider to be the pirate grimoire. Uh, yeah. Pretty interesting. I, this movie is very artistic. It's shot with a lot of love, and I don't, you know, I don't think a lot of people ap- appreciate or have seen this film. Because when I bring this film up to most people, they're like, you mean the one with the guy with Smile Bale? I'm like, no, that's <laughs> a remake. Yeah. Which was horrible, by the way. As much as I've never, I've stayed away from it. Horrible. I never, I never tried. Horrible, horrible film. I saw the remake of The Mist, and that wasn't too bad, but, uh, you know. The Fog, you know, I hold the Carpenters a little more dear where I don't watch it. How long has it been since you've seen this film? <sighs> Maybe 10 or 11 years. Jens and I cranked the old MGM DVD out recently. Really? This, and uh, I mean, this looks fantastic. Uh, there's our boy Tom Atkins. Yep. Stop it! Anyway, <laughs> um, but yeah, this was shot in the same part of Northern California that uh, Halloween Three was in Sacramento, right? No, not Sacramento. We'd have to. I, my phone's toast, or I would <laughs> access the friendly internet for that question. But it, if you, you can double check me on that, I would be happy if you did. I did so, uh, shot Antonio Bay. Correct. Wherever that is. It's Northern California, is all I know. Because I kept saying it was cold as hell when oh, they were yeah. shooting it. Um, on the Horace Hollow Ground episode on this Blu-ray, it's pretty funny. They were going to go down to the radio station slash. Uh, lighthouse that Adrian Barbeau is in some of the shots in and they couldn't get down to it because it was so fucking windy. <laughs> like he could have got blown off him and the cameraman trying to walk down to it. Now uh, Tom Atkins character in this movie his name is Nick Castle. Huge throwback to the shape. And uh, <laughs> a lot of people I think that's pretty funny. It is awesome. It's very cool. I don't think a lot of people know about that. There's so many hidden gems in this stuff. And then Charles Seidman. Uh, if you'll look right here, this is an interesting thing I'd like to point out. The gentleman right here in this scene is the guy that injects Snake Plissken in Escape from New York. He's the doctor that injects him with the nice uh, explosives in the neck. And actually, I want to point out that I just noticed that for the first fucking time right now. That's awesome. Every time I watch these, there's always a hidden gem there. Dean Cunley. Yeah. If he's working with John, you're getting quality. Absolute quality. And Charles Cyphers, that was uh, Sheriff Lay Brackett in, in the original in the original <laughs> Halloween and Halloween two. Yep. He plays a character named Dan O'Bannon. Who is obviously <laughs> is awesome. obviously a throwback to the actual Well, it's know, a throwback to to Dan that wrote Dark Star with John yeah, before he awesome. did Alien. It's fucking cool. Yeah. But yeah, that's I just noticed that. That's I swear. We have Take the Taster's Choice on it. That's him. Yeah, though. hell yeah, that is him. Oh, nice. He's the one that injects Snake and's like, tell him. See, I like it when uh, directors keep their, you know, their, their pot. Cold Mountain yeah. Valley water right now. They keep their posse, you know. And uh, I guess because they, they build a bond and a relationship with these people and you just have a crew, you know. And if you're comfortable with these people, then, uh, you know, you want to keep it that way. I think there's just a lot of love that's put into this stuff. There's also uh, a guy in this film named Tommy Wallace, which is also funny. I actually double checked that. that. That probably is the Tommy. Or is it not Tommy? Lee no, Wallace? it's a guy. It's uh, it's George Tommy. Flower plays him. Who's, gotcha, okay. Uh, it's a throw to him, though, isn't it? Yeah. 
I never caught that either. I mean, there's stuff you can catch every time you watch this film. Said he was often uh, cast as a drunk or homeless character. When I watched this... So we'll be on the lookout for that, but his name is Tommy Wallace. When I watched this recently, the MGM... I, the DVD, and I'll tell you guys out there, if you have an opportunity to do this, and I'm not talking about the DVD that comes with the Blu-ray, but if you have a, a chance to get a copy of the original DVD cheap and bump it up against some of these Blu-rays that Scream Factory's put out, it really is impressive. Oh, yeah, they do an amazing job. Because this right job. now is night and day from the DVD that we watched at Genesis. Because it, it uh, wow, it's just night and day. Yeah, it's it looks, a night and it looks day amazing. fucking, I mean, the transfer for this is gorgeous. You know, it looks like we just rented this from Redbox and it came out this year, you know. I mean, it's it's impressive. That's what I love about This movie's very Street atmospheric. Factory. I like it. I think people wa wanted to walk in and see a lot of gore. Well, this is you know? more of like an eerie... Um, yeah. Now, there he is. Tommy Lee Wallace, film editor. He's, he's a producer on this, too, I think. And for you guys out there that don't know, Tommy directed one of Corey and I's favorite films, which we were referencing earlier, which would be Halloween 3. Oh, yeah, which we got to do. I think uh, Halloween 3 would be a good one to do. Well, I think anything with John's name on it except for the ward, I'm all about Which it. originally we were going to do that as the first episode, but we decided to go with the blob, and we've just uh, kept this fucking shovel-headed hate machine going. And, uh, I think so. I mean, it, you It's know, gone well so far. I mean, we've, we've got a... Uh, we'll get to it, and we're getting... I like this because we're getting this as a... Pre I like that we did this first because... I think you and I both love Tom Atkins enough to where it's oh, like yeah. that's his kind of crowning gem. And I mean this this film the way it's shot is so is so beautiful. Um, this is when John was also still partnered with Deborah Hill. For yeah. those of you that know, Deborah worked with John a lot up until they had a falling out. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, she's passed away. Possibly, um, uh, I'm pretty sure she has. But. Just, um, yeah, Sad. this is the same love that was put into uh, Halloween with a bigger budget. Yeah, she died in 2005. Yeah. Some forehead. Well, rest in peace. Yep. She and there is did. Tom. Yep. <laughs> Stop it! There he is. That's awesome. Um, I want to give a, some death metal shout-outs here to uh, first and foremost to Gruesome. Their new EP's on, uh, out right now. On relapse, dimensions of horror, and it's fucking awesome. If 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 you're skeptical, and here comes Jamie. Um, if if you're skeptical about it for any fucking reason whatsoever, all you gotta do is go to noisy.com, and they have their whole EP streaming on there, and you can stream it and, and check it out, and go go pick up a copy of it. And they got some limited releases as well on on that site. Uh, on relapse. They so. do a limited of the CD? Yeah, one of our, the vinyls are limited. The, uh, Not the CD. CD no, the CD is good. Um, but yeah, it's it's pretty fucking killer. Um, you know, Matt Harvey's a huge uh, Fulci guy, and there's a lot of Fulci love on that. Uh, they have a song called Seven Doors, you know. Um, nice. My favorite one on the, on the EP is track three, and it's called Amputation, which is great. Great title, so... Uh, shout out to them and also to um, Despise Daikon. They put out a new track today, which is pretty fucking killer. Um, haven't this is the first song in like seven years. They're about to drop a record. Um, it's pretty awesome. I believe the song is called Beast, which is the title track from their record. So be on the lookout for that if if you're into that. Um, it's more modern death metal stuff. A lot of uh, gargly brie shit involved but it you know i think they're pretty awesome montreal canada goodness and their drummer goes a million miles an hour so that's cool um but yeah um just want to give some shout outs to that and also to Haiti eternal and vital remains who we'll be seeing monday yes uh, i've been listening to king of kings I, that that fucking album is is a shit wagon it's it's so good you um, like infernus Loved it. Uh, that's a very underrated record. A lot of people weren't talking about it. Well, we found out today, and yeah, I had... That's a great fucking record. I had reached out to uh, to JJ about us interviewing him, possibly, and uh, he's not on the tour right now. He had to take some time for himself, so hopefully he gets all that straightened out. Love you, JJ. Right. And 
I'm not really sure who's actually playing bass for them right now. Whoever Vic is, I don't know mm-hmm. who Vic is. So right. he made it sound like I should know who Vic is. I'm not sure who that is. <laughs> uh, but uh, so I guess it's just Eric. So uh, I, and I don't. I'm not even sure. And maybe we were. You were telling me about this. I wasn't. I wasn't sure that even that that drummer was with them. I don't know who's actually out with them right now. Right. He's I, not posted anything that I've seen. Maybe he did, and I missed it on Facebook. But I never saw, you know, a lineup. The only lineup I know for sure that we're seeing is the Vital Remains lineup. It's the same lineup we've been had a pleasure. Which, by the way, guys, if I'm not, I think I mentioned this in one of the first episodes. Definitely go to to YouTube and check out Vital Remains. Their current lineup. It's pretty sick. Yeah, they're um. <laughs> Who's they're they're Vic? pretty they're pretty notorious. For their stage, pre- uh, Brian, their their vocalist, he's pretty notorious for his uh, stage presence. You know, uh, first video I saw of him with the band was, um, you know, because I saw the Damien guy a few times, but uh, the first time I saw Brian perform with them was a show, and I think it was Florida, pop, you know, somewhere in, in there, and uh, they had a, a cross on stage, and this guy's a pretty big uh, Satanist, you know, he's... He's the real deal. And uh, there was a cross on stage while they were playing, and he had somebody get the cross down for him, and he was kind of holding it up and holding it upside down and, and, and you know, pissing the, the venue off. And, you know, he was basically saying, um, you know, why are you going to book a band like Vital Remains and have a cross up here? You know, it's bullshit. So, uh and then there's another video I saw where someone handed him a, a Bible on stage and he was ripping it up. And I mean, yeah, this guy we, doesn't give a fuck. Hit, so. He's we're excited about seeing them. And his rants are pretty pretty funny too. Um, he's got some pretty good pretty good points in there. But I mean, it's it's bringing back the old ways of death metal where you just don't give a fuck. And I think that's that's important these days because there's really not a whole lot of it anymore. I mean. Um, you know, the, the ones that have been around are the ones that are still doing it the right way. But um, for him to come into this band and represent it the way he has been is pretty awesome. So uh, shout out to Brian and, and Vital Remains as well for, for uh, carrying the fucking torch. But yeah, I have no idea what lineup of Hate Eternal we're seeing. But what I was going to say real quick, but back to the film, the gentleman you were mentioning earlier, uh, and that's, that, that was him I was pointing out there a second... Uh, that's not him just then, but hopefully it'll show him again here in a second. He has been in a shit ton of John stuff. That not not him. The guy in the back with the beard. Kinda looks like Bob Seeger. Yeah, he does look like Bob Seeger. I'll just tell you guys this right now. <laughs> this guy has been in and I'm just gonna do the list here because I know because uh, I watch a lot of John stuff. Um, there he is again right there on the right. He has been in a shit ton of John's movies. He's in They Live. He's the... He, look at him there on the right. He's the one that's yeah. like, yeah, it's just that, that asshole licking his nuts again. Yeah. He's he's in... Uh, he's the... Uh, excuse me, custodian in right. uh, Village of the Damned. Mm-hmm. He is... I mean, I could sit here all night. He's <laughs> he's done a lot. Of, John was really apparently he passed away a few years ago, which really sucks because that guy to me is like a set piece of John's, right. a living set piece because he's been in so much fucking shit. And of course, the, the in this scene, the the fog. I don't has think rolled he was in. in Halloween. Maybe not. You mentioned him earlier. Mm-hmm. This gentleman's name is he the just the Tommy Wallace. Uh, George Flower, is that who that is? George Flower, that's George Flower. Wow. Let's find out what all George, and double check me on this, George I know was in the films I mentioned. Let's see, he's, um, he died in 2004. Which sucks. Yeah, and he died just now in this film because they're getting hacked up by these, by the fog. They're, uh, it's got a fucking, like, hook and a, yeah, it's and the a fog fucking pirates. axe. That's just, shit's crazy. It's um, a pirate movie. Oh yeah, it's great. Let's see. Yeah, the the first looks like the first movie he was in with John was was this was this film, and then he was in uh, Escape from New York. Yep. He was in Back to the Future. Yeah, he's he's the bum. He's in both of them. Yeah. He's the bum. He's yep. 
Oh, what's his? Is it Ted? Is that his Something name? Like, yeah, I think so. And he's in Starman, and he's in Pumpkinhead, and he is in They Live. Uh, Village of the Damned. Uh, Puppet Master 2, Village of the Damned. I mean, yeah, he's in fucking Wishmaster, or Wishmaster. That movie's... We should do Wishmaster. That movie's awesome. I want a Blu-ray <laughs> of Wishmaster 1 and 2. You got one? Or they no, don't, they don't, they don't exist. Have, really? No. They don't have... No. Wow. Wow. Which is larceny, as far as I'm concerned. Kids, if you've never seen Wishmaster, it's an Wishmaster ensemble. Too, it's an ensemble both horror of those are film. Great. It really is an ensemble horror film. And, you know, I want to I want to mention because Kane film. Hodder's in it. I think Robert England's in it. I want to mention everyone's two in more that films that, that, that is larceny. Wishmaster's that, huge. These are two that that, and that's, that do not exist on Blu-ray. That's Robert Kurtzman. Goodness, yes. Like he fucking directed. But I've got I've got two more. All right, let's do it. That are larceny. That the it is. Larceny kids that these do not exist. Go search these out. They exist on DVD. Waxworks and Waxworks Two, which our boy George Flower was also in. Yes. Waxworks Two. Mm-hmm. Those movies fucking rule. If you like Evil Dead Two and Army of Darkness, if you like that camp slash gore that's going on, it's got it's got it all. Those are great films. Love those. Rented the hell out of those on VHS. <laughs> uh, they're great. So, Larceny, we need Waxworks and Waxworks 2, and we need... Wishmaster 1 and 2. For Corey. And that's that's just, that's just the law today. That's what we need. But it is. Those are just fun. Uh, but, uh... Now, Wishmaster is like, you know, the uh, still the, the standing... Uh, Expendables of horror because it's got everybody in it sure. somewhere. I mean Tony Todd's and I mean they're all Kane in. Kane Hodder, I think, yeah. is a security. He's guard like a security guard. Yeah. I mean they're they're all in there somewhere. It's those are good movies. They are. I like great. both those. So both of those are good. But, but yeah, the Waxworks. If you've never seen, I'm not sure if you've seen those or not. Those are both great. I haven't seen the Waxworks. You would movies. like them a lot. They're just fucking awesome. And there's Tommy Lee. Wallace's best friend and who is that and that's Tom Atkins Tom Atkins has been porking Jamie Lee Curtis he's a lucky man he is in this film he is anyway for pretend but anyway and I think she looks hotter in this than she did in Halloween yeah she's a little bit older a little bit hotter that's right Activia anyway (laughs) is this before True Lies (laughs) yeah by about, about, about 15 years really True Lies is 90s yeah, it's like 94. Oh. Never seen that movie. You've never seen True Life? I've never seen it. It's funny. I know. Any, anything Arnold There you go. There's funny. some Schwarzenegger fan larceny that I've never seen that. Wow. A lot of people. I mean, you could you can do without it, you know. I wanted to plug something real quick just for uh, any fantasy nerds out there that are like some old school goodness. They're putting, and I think this is great, these already exist, but they're putting Conan and Conan, Conan the Barbarian and Conan the Destroyer in a two-pack. Like a cheap little two pack. Nice. Which I think you should get. But anyway. I will get it. Uh, pretty awesome. I'm just happy they're putting those in a little pack where people can. That movie gets some love. Oh, yeah. Not horror, but it's still fucking awesome. Those are good movies to get drunk to and listen to fucking death metal. <laughs> Watch Arnold hack people. Up. <laughs> Damn right. There's this. Uh, I forget the, the YouTube channel that put it together, but they, they put together a compilation. Of all the Arnold kills, you showed me that a few years ago. Yeah, and it was like, it's like twenty minutes long, and they have a kill count on the top. It's raw. And they have like you know these little skull and crossbow things that go across every. You showed guy me that when we were killed. drunk, I think. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. We were listening to um, probably something weird like docking and just watching kills. I don't know something something weird. Oh. And, uh, so yeah, that that was pretty fun. Uh, Arnold movies are great, you know, especially like. Uh, Especially like Commando or something like that, you know, is a really fun film to watch when you're when you're getting drunk listening to, to death metal stuff. So, so Tom Atkins is gonna go check out the fog, and uh, he's you know I've never had the pleasure of meeting him. I absolutely would shit. I think he's. Uh, I think he's an unsung hero to this genre. I, he, I have never heard him badmouth any horror film that he was in. 
And he's the other doctor you guys have, uh... You alright, Tuna? Alright. And there's me and my bowl cut again. <laughs> it's not really me, but it looks like me as a kid. I was gonna say, you, uh... You don't see kids with the early 80s bowl anymore, and I had the early 80s It's bowl. like the reverse bowl now. You see more on women than you do... I don't Dudes, really. You know. I know it's kind of depressing because that's definitely a. It was a, 80s bowl. I liked having the 80s bowl haircut. I was into it because it was kind of a mop, but not really. He's like I, to, I kind of look like one of the Beatles, you know. <laughs> He's about to take it off and put a fish in it. He's going fishing. This is awesome. See, he, he finds he a, finds some piece of the, a treasure chest. Coin. That's not good. You don't keep pirate treasure. You get fucked. This movie's so awesome. Isn't the cover art's really awesome for it? The uh, the newly done cover art that, that uh, Screen Factory did. It looks great. Have you seen the classic cover art? Yes. I, it's like the blue. I've got a revert. I like it. I don't know why. I remember seeing this at a drive-in theater with my uncle. The, you know, this movie... I, here's what's fun about this movie. This movie may have been the one... That really made me love him. And as a kid, Michael Myers, not that I didn't appreciate him, but I was scared to death of him. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so going creepy. to see this, it's like, John Carpenter can be fun, too. Yeah, he can make pirate tales. You know, plus, eventually. I was in the film. You know, I'm, I, Not literally, but it was like my bowl cut running around this film. So it was <laughs> like I was running around with my, my bowl cut. And Corey will dig this, wanting to play with my Star Wars figures. And yeah. That's all I was really wanting to do, and play with my Batman, Superman, Migos, <laughs> and my Star Trek Migos. But I didn't really want to, you know, my Planet of the Apes, Planet of the Apes figures, my six million dollar man figure. I, you know, <laughs> all my bullshit. Every time I see that haircut, it just harkens me back to a better time in my life. Right. And Doctor Zayas versus Steve Austin, you know. Yeah, man. And then Superman comes in and saves the day, and <laughs> yeah. Batman doesn't like it's it. It's that haircut, I'm telling you. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, make me a hot dog. I'm ready to play with my Steve Austin figure. Anyway. <laughs> or you can use Logue. I'm going to use Han Solo. <laughs> anyway. And I was all about it, you know. And now we both got mops. And you know, I used to have a bowl cut, too, in the 90s kids. Now, did you have the, the, the 80s bowl? No, I had the 90s bowl. It was like straight around, like a mushroom cut. Yours was more the. Yours was like the. That was the penis. You, your, no, yours was the fifties, uh, Beatles, and mine was the late sixties Beatles. Right. I just needed the chops. That's great, man. Good. Yeah. Gave me a lot of knowledge that uh, that bowl. Oh, Adrian Barbo's big tits. Yeah, there you go. Those don't ever get old. <laughs> Miss Barbo, if you ever do a thing with us, I apologize, but you have beautiful breasts. <laughs> oh. Tom's been porking Jamie Lee all night. Cause he's a lucky man in this film. She has to check in with Dr. Chalice and get her prescription. I don't know about you, but I think this part of California is absolutely gorgeous. I do. I want to go there. Be, I bet it's be cold amazing. as fuck, but I really like it. I think it'd be great. Still not going to see. I, I would imagine, you know, a lot of the – maybe one of them lived there. So I've never heard why they kept choosing this part of – I mean, to use this in two films. Right. I mean, obviously, I'm assuming Tommy Lee Wallace that directed Halloween 3 was – since he was working on this film with John – you know, I'm, I'm sure that at some point, you know, he was probably like, fuck yeah, I'm going to go back there, you know. And there is the first Scream Queen ever. Right. Right now. And beside her is also uh, uh, the girl from Halloween, which I cannot think of her fucking name right now. Do you recognize her there? She was married to Tommy Lee Wallace. Huh. Uh, they have kids together. What is her name? Uh, she gets killed in the car in Halloween. I'm, man, I'm dropping the ball here today. <laughs> That's her on the right. I can't think of her name. It's not PJ Souls. No. Actually, I think she's way hotter than PJ Souls. Tommy Lee Wallace is a lucky man that he was puffing that. <laughs> so I actually think she's really hot. You know, she shit, I've got a place for that. It's her. It's uh Is it Nancy Keyes? Yes. Akaias. She's uh 
Nancy Loomis. Is that who that is? Yeah. Huh. Well, if that's who was married to Tommy Wallace, if that's if you find that, then we're in business. I can never remember her name. Yep. That's her. Okay, cool. I picked it out, kids. You know, name dropping is not my bag, baby. But <laughs> sometimes, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. There's Adrian Barbeau in her car going to the radio station. God, you gotta love that old radio. Yeah, it looks windy and cold as fuck where they shot this. It does. Which adds to the uh, yeah, it's, effect it's of beautiful. everything. You know? I, if they, whoever, you know, I'm not sure if John did it himself or what, but whoever did the location scouting for this was a fucking really smart. It's really nice. Well, it still looks cold as hell. I don't think I would ever left my trailer. <laughs> Unless I had my 80s bowl. Right. Then I would have left the trailer. Been like, I'm going to go to Kmart and get some figures anyway. Jamie Lee Curtis, cute little ass in this film. I, she looks really good in this film. I'm normally never turned on by her, but I think she is very hot in this. I mean, check her out. Oh yeah. Almost doesn't I even mean, look not like to her. Be, you know, not to just be nasty, but she's fucking hot. I mean, she she's just styling in this. <laughs> that little that little rump, <laughs> with tight jeans. Fictitionally, you know. Tom Atkins is forking her. It's awesome. Yeah, there she is. And she was married to Nancy Loomis. She was in Halloween. She was also uh, in this. And it's pretty awesome because she's also in Halloween 3. Right. If I'm not mistaken. I don't know when her and Tom Lee Wallace were actually together, but I know they have children. And I'm pretty sure they're separated. Right. Which sucks, but it's cool they have kids and it's pretty awesome. He was pounding that too because she's pretty hot. <laughs> I love all this. This kind of was all in house, you know. Well, this is actually uh, Tom Atkins' first film with with John. Yeah. Was this film? Well, it's good we did this first and sell Halloween. Yeah. Because you know, go in order without even knowing it, you know. And then he went on to do Escape from New York, of course, respectively. That's th that's the one out of the park for me. Obviously, Lee Van Cleef, which Lee. Not to get into that, we'll do that with that with that movie, but uh, Lee was picked for Escape from New York because he was in fucking Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, man. Right. Which of John's a huge fan of, I'm a huge fan of, and can quote me, is the best Western ever made. It is the best. It's good stuff. And Quentin Tarantino's favorite film. Last I had read. But anyway, uh, that cross that they just drove by is actually still there uh, to this day. Wow. I know that because of Sean Clark and Horace Hall of Grounds. And, uh, yeah, pretty cool. Now, is this uh, John Carpenter's church right here that they're going back to? It is. It's, uh, Bennett is his name in the film. It's the house It's the house that John built. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, Janet Lee, that's pretty damn impressive. Hey, Janet, be in this because I love... Psycho and my first movie made shitload of money with my daughter. And, and it's with her and Jamie. It's cool. It yeah. is. I mean, Scream Queen goodness. They're all there, you know. Yeah, it's definitely all there. And people don't really realize, you know, how um, essential this film is to horror. I mean, it's 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 just different, but it's it's very effective and it's it's, it's fucking good. And the, it's atmospheric. And the, it's not the, a, the cinematography. It's not a the cinematography is is so good in this That's movie. That's Cunley. Oh yeah, it's it's such a good. I mean, this looks great. You got too. the same crew essentially going right off a of Halloween right into this. And then this was a part of a, a two picture deal. With after this, they filmed Escape from New York. Correct. So um, I'm sure the crew is it's pretty similar with that too. Hal Holbrook out of the shadows. Anyway, <laughs> um, it's like you always see the mustache first, and then. It's Father Malone. And she looks pretty awesome with a with a stash, I gotta say. I think it looks pretty cool. The eighty st the nineteen eighty stash right on the right on the nose. 
It does look good. It doesn't look as good as John's or Bird's, though. No, I mean, you can't. Of course, you can tell he grew up for this film. Yeah, like, you could have a bitch and leave on Cleve stash. He's like, okay, I'll do it. Oh, well, yeah, there's another one. That's a classic one. And he does it, too. Pulls it off. I'll give him that. And Tom and Jamie are now on, or inside, the wrecked hull of the fog attack boat. To the demise of our guy from They Live that talks about that guy licking his nuts. <laughs> Which he, that guy, seriously, I can't applaud, I would have loved to have met him. Yeah. Would you say that? he was a go-to guy for John for whatever reason. He's in, you know, because especially his character in They Live, he's very memorable in that. That's why right. I keep bringing it up. I think I thought he was fucking hilarious in it. I mean, he's a bastard, you know, because he's turned on him and he's taken the money. and Right. He's sold out to the aliens, but whatever. Hey, you know, they're, they're pretty uh, manipulative, those aliens. It's like, obey, slave, obey. That's another one we definitely have to do. That one's... It's Piper goodness. It's uh, Keith David goodness. It's, yeah, it's... I mean, that, that, that thing's firing That every fight cylinder. scene that they shot is oh, one of the best fight scenes in cinema, whether you're a horror fan or an action fan or a sci-fi fan. Awesome. I mean, that movie has everything to offer. I mean, Piper is such a badass in that film. And um, it's just really good, you know. It's, yeah, it's creepy, you know. Right now... Because the ward didn't get a theatrical release to us locally right. or regionally, actually regionally. So I guess I've seen all of John's stuff at the theater. Huh. You know, if it wasn't a direct-to-video thing or something like that, I've seen sure. all of it, you know. Uh, which is cool. Even if it was stuff that I wasn't necessarily crazy about, I still wouldn't watch it, you know. Any stuff you saw more than once in the theater? Like while at first release, you know. Uh, know you know, you... well, last year to talk about this, and this is something I wish I could have. It just didn't work out. Schedule was for Corey to go with me. I went and saw where they put Halloween back in the theater. Yeah, and, and you. Were... I'm going to tell you what how effective that was, and I've carried on with that in our private conversation. But I'll tell you guys on here that was that was fucking outstanding. Uh, uh, as far as uh. At the time, uh, I remember seeing uh, Escape from New York more than once because my uncle was a big fan of it. Awesome. I saw They Live on My Own. I couldn't drive, but I threw a fit till I got to see that a couple of times. Right. Uh, Prince of Darkness I saw a couple of times at the theater. Uh, Christine I saw multiple times at the theater again Love because it. of my uncle. Um, and... Uh, uh, the thing scared the shit out of me, so I saw it just once. Uh, <laughs> that movie actually scared me pretty hard. I'm trying to think. Uh, Village of the Damned I saw twice, just for the cast. The cast of that film makes that movie for me. It's not. No, it's more like this one. It's more atmospheric. It's awesome. Uh... Which atmospheric is great, you know. You, you know, know, obviously there's the, some stuff that I didn't get to see of his. The first film I would have saw of his at the theater was Halloween. I didn't see Dark Star. I didn't see uh, Assault on Precinct 13. I was right. too young. But yeah, so those. Uh, I'm trying to think if I'm forgetting something. Uh, Ghost of Mars. Did you see only that saw one it once. You did see it. Uh, vampires only saw once. Right. Which like vampires, those movies, but those weren't go back to films for me. Right. Of course, I love vampires. I think that's a great movie. Yeah, you know, I like it too. It's if you're, just if you're, when you when you were going into that because the movie before it was in the Mouth of Madness, which I thought was a way better film. Right. Yeah. And uh, so I was kind of disappointed. And that's Lovecraft, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's awesome. Um, that movie, if you've never seen that, kids, uh, in the Mouth of Madness is one to definitely give a spin. It's Fucking Sam Neill, John Carpenter, it's for goddamn rules. Any any Lovecraft shit is gonna be awesome, you know. Of course, Reanimators the shit and From Beyond's well, awesome. Yeah, I mean, you get into that and stuff. You get, those those guys to me, those, those guys really nail it. But oh yeah, I thought it was cool to see John do something with that. It was and that's that movie's yeah, not did, like his normal film, and it was he did a really good job with it. It's um, nutty. <laughs> uh, Lovecraft but yeah, was very nutty. Um, I think. I'm trying to think. Uh, 
But if you got, I feel like I'm forgetting something that I saw more than once. If you got, oh, I saw, like a, I saw Escape from L.A. a couple times. Yeah. you know, for the hell of it. I'm not a huge fan of that film, but I like it okay. If you Blu-ray collectors out there like vampires enough, Twilight Time still has vampires available. Not not very many, but they're still there. So, yeah. Uh, they probably won't put that title, reissue that title, because it wasn't popular, because they still have copies. So get it while you can, because they won't make any more um, once they're gone. I've never like they did Fright one. Night. So, um, you know, because Fright Night was such a high demand, they put out two you know, releases of it. Um, and they still own it. There are a lot of people that think that they're going to relinquish that. They won't. No. Uh, they made too much money for Sony doing that. And they, the the second run, the one that you got and that yeah. I got, and... That one, I mean, I have both versions, but the the second run of it sold out in less than an hour. So yeah. you either got it or you didn't. <laughs> it looks great too. I mean, yeah. it's, it's great release. And the first uh, one came with that magnet, and then you know, I have Rachel Carpenter's Marvel. Christine on Twilight Time, and I tell you, it looks better than the standard Sony version. Yeah, it also has some different audio tracks. Which I think when you brought it over, we watched it one time. We got you know, we fucking. To one of our all nighters, uh, you we had did, you yeah. had brought the Twilight Time one over. Yep. But one day, you know, you said you wanted to bring over the Sony one and do a comparison. Same thing with Halloween three. You said the bare bones actually looked. Suppo- yeah, supposedly, and I have it. I've never done the comparison. Universal last year put out a bare bones of Halloween three that supposedly looks uh, better. Than the, than, than the Screen the, Factory. Than the Factory one. It doesn't have any features on it. Hmm. Um, I don't even think it has a fucking menu. But I, I bought it. I'm a huge fan of that film. I bought it. It was cheap. You can get it for about like 10 bucks. So. And you can find it anywhere. Um, you have to get it online. I've never physically seen it in the store. But I think I've seen it at FYE, if I'm not mistaken. They have copies of it. Really? Mm-hmm. Not the not three. You know, like the, the Screen Factory, but the, the Sony one they got. That you have the, the universal, the standard, universal, yeah, the standard. Yeah, I've never seen it there, but that's cool. I mean, if they have it, that's great. I don't. That place is a weird place. You can find some interesting shit in there. Yeah, um, you know, there, we have two locations that have FYEs around here, and the one out west gets more obscure shit in than the other one. The other one's kind of kind of poor. They don't really get a whole lot of shit, and they. But the the other one gets some weird imported stuff in. I forget the name of the company, but they get this Canadian company that puts out a lot of shit overseas. Alliance. Yeah, Alliance, and they they have a lot of Alliance stuff in there, and uh, which is weird. They had an Alliance uh, release of Serbian film, which was I've never seen before. You know, it's uh, I mean you can get it; it's not rare or anything. But I just thought it was weird that they had that version of Serbian film on Blu-ray in their store. And, uh, you know, they get a lot of obscure shit. Sometimes you'll see uh, Arrow films in there. I mean, I guess it's whoever. One of it that we should talk about, the one that we went to in Atlanta stomps. God, any that, that, we've that one had every, in. that's where I found it. Was a, it was like a, it's literally the size of a fucking closet. Yeah. And there was more fucking Blu-rays in it there than I've like seen at old, Best Buy. It looked like an old Hot Topic the size of it. Yeah, and there was be- there was better Blu-rays in there than I've seen at Best Buy in it's fucking where I found five years. Stops, the uh, Sid Haig movie. Yep. And they had Contamination, which was very hard for you to put down, but you somehow put it down. I got it for you at Mad Monster. You did. I love you. <laughs> I got you that, and I got you uh, Island of uh, yeah. the Dead. Or is that what it is? Island, Island of, of Death. Death. Yeah. Exploitation I've never, film. It's really good. I've never seen that film actually. I've seen Contamination. Never seen uh, Island of Death. Which we can we can do that on an episode. That'd yeah. Be fun. Yeah. Um, as well as contamination. That's Speaking of Best Buy, I wanted to point this out. If I, we have any horror comedy fans out there, one of my favorite, if not my favorite, horror comedy. Um, it's a Best Buy exclusive. It comes out Tuesday, and they're putting out the Burbs. Really? And it's ten bucks. Fuck yeah! And I'm Is buying the Tom Hanks movie. I'm buying the That's shit awesome. out of that. We got. We got Hate Eternal and Vital Remains and t- the fucking Tuesday. I'm hauling my ass down there when they open and get me a <laughs> copy we got of the, the Burbs. Burbs. We, can, we should do an episode on the Burbs. I think that'd be fun. It's, you know what, man? People consider that that's a great, if you've never seen it, that's a great, kids, it's a great horror comedy. It really is. If you, in the vein, <clears throat> if you enjoy stuff like the original Ghostbusters, it's definitely, it's just fun. 
there, there's not there's nothing really going on. But you got Corey Feldman, right. you got fucking Tom Hanks, and it's fucking it's awesome. You've also got uh, Laura Dern, stab Bruce Dern of uh, Alfred Hitchcock fame. He's in it. It's fucking awesome. That sounds pretty good. But I'm happy it's finally getting a Blu-ray release. It's fucking bare bones, but I don't give a shit. I'm happy to finally have it in high def. Right. Because you could only so get it first... as a Region 2 so the... German copy and okay. won't fucking play. Yeah, it's this never... This the first time on Blu-ray. Yeah, and, they, wow. and they've got the rights to it. And, of course, now that... In the in back to the movie for a second, the uh, danger sign is, is oozing with water. And, you know... That's not good. They know some shit's about to go down. And they're a little... You know, uh, voice... You know what? An uh, answering machine is about to get fucked by the water. So there's some. You know, I, you have to really kind of pay attention to it. Best Buy will sneak some stuff in there occasionally that they have oh. exclusive stuff to. Uh, and, and I'll tell you something else that they have. I want to plug them for. They normally Best Buy has some really good deals on Scream Factory titles that are new movies. Yeah, I bought some kind of. Tracy Lord's camp movie where there's sharks at the camp recently. That's I haven't weird. watched it. It looks awful, but it looks awful. Awesome. Oh, I forget what that movie's called. <laughs> I mean, it it's looks called like a shark massacre. It looks awful, yeah. awful, but I was like, it's fucking eight bucks. I'm talking buying this. I've heard of that, yeah. But I they know. have a lot of like new, you know, not the retro, like what we're watching stuff. I don't know why, but they. There's they new shit. They like have like sleeper movies that you, know, you haven't right. heard of. Then C movies, yeah. Yeah, they always. just bust them out on you. And, but it's got you know like Tracy Lords or somebody in there to to get your attention. And then I mean, it looks horrible, but I had to get. It's, it's like, like a shark season. prison massacre. Yeah, or that's like, it. That's it. It's yeah. something. <laughs> it just looks. I mean, it's probably a foot long, but hey, you know. Speaking of foot longs, uh, I know it's not even for this this podcast, but I check it out just so I can laugh and and, and have something negative to say because it's fun. The uh, White Chapel put out a new song and it's it's terrible, just like all their other stuff. But <laughs> in case you wanted any hope, that it's called The Void and it's out now on uh, what's that record label called? Oh, uh, Metal Blade, whatever that label is. And they, uh, yeah, they that song sucks. So just wanted to put that out there. Um, you know, it's cute when bands try to that think they're death metal, but they're not, and they're they're nowhere close. And then they, you know, like, yeah, my favorite bands are Suffocation and, and, and Crisian, but my favorite uh, outfitter is, is Ralph Lauren and uh, Abercrombie and Fitch. It's like, cool, man, you guys are extreme. Here's you, here's you a, fun, a fun story. I remember um, when I worked, I was doing set changes for a, a local club when I lived in Knoxville. And um, one of the members of Whitechapel showed up to get into a show and was wearing that Air Apostle shit. <laughs> and you say it looked like he just came off the tennis court. I mean, he was wearing... I mean, isn't that some kind of, like, religious clothing line or something? He was oh, wearing no. that Air Apostle shit. It's in the mall, you know what I'm talking about? It's like... Yeah. I think it's like some kind of Jesus clothing or something. And I was sitting there just thinking, <laughs> wow, what a, what a fucking fruit. <laughs> you know? I was like... It's like it's like where do you keep your rackets up your ass? Yeah, you know you're gonna you're gonna miss your your uh, your uh, your your serve off at the at the fucking tennis court today, Mister Agassi, if you don't get back. <laughs> but anyway, your in your fucking air apostle shirt <laughs> with your Callaway sack. <laughs> it was just like you know whatever, but you know oh. you keep putting out your shitty music. You have some somebody stupid enough to buy it. Uh. Back to something good. We've got uh, <laughs> we've got my '80s bowl cut. Yeah. Speaking of me, and it's not me, but I keep saying that. But it's funny. I, I look just like this kid. If y'all ever want to know what I look like as a as an eight year old, there I am. <laughs> love that. Love that hairdo. Actually, just just for fun, I may uh, if we get enough likes on the our Facebook page, which Corey was kind enough to construct for us. I may put a picture of my real. You have 80, one. I do. You have an 80s. 80s I do. Pop. I've I never do. seen that. I may actually put it up just for fun. I've never Dr. seen that Vincent picture. West, so that would be new for me. At seven or eight years old. Wow. I even have one of me, which is pretty funny that, that Corey would. This picture actually. 
would be funny. Y'all can see the bowl cut. I'm literally wearing a Darth Vader helmet <laughs> holding a Hulk doll. Wow. If that's not <laughs> retro, I don't know what the fuck <laughs> well, it's, <laughs> and it's. But anyway, it's it's funny. But Only if we get enough likes, I'll do that. It's like bowl cut, MD. <laughs> yeah. 80s bowl. It was just when life was good, you know? Yeah. I was into hot dogs and pizza and playing with my toys and watching <laughs> watching movies. Watching Carpenter films, yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. See, God, she looks good in this. I, I hate to keep bringing that up, but she... Jamie Lee looks outstanding in this. She just does. Activia! Anyway. <laughs> she just looks good in this. She looks better in this than she does in striptease. I... I don't know. I think she looks better in this than she did in Halloween. Halloween, I didn't really think she was hot. But she looks good in this. Well, yeah, she kind of looks like an old woman in, <laughs> in Halloween a little bit. Like, uh, older than she, she definitely than she was, because I don't know. I guess then she dressed like she was proper, but, you know, she kind of dressed like an old lady in that movie. But, uh, the guy Tom is talking to, I've seen in something else as well. As well, I'm not really sure what, but I've definitely seen him in another picture. I just don't know what picture. I don't know. He looks familiar. He's got like the Stephen King glasses on. I've. I don't know who that is, but I swear I've seen him in something else. <laughs> I don't know that it was necessarily a John thing, though. Uh, cheers. Cheers. If I can give a... <laughs> Try and do this without laughing and fucking it up. <laughs> if I can give a... <laughs> A rating to that new Whitechapel song. This is out of ten. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Definitely. Sorry, this podcast is for ages 12 and 12. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting younger by the minute. It's my, it's my haircut. It's, it's because of this bowl. kid we're going backwards. It's my 80s bowl. It's, it's cool. We're getting nostalgic here. I found that here. piece of that pirate boat and I'm fucking sinking the ship. Yeah. Look, I need to get me some Legos. <clears throat> you know, I was never a Legos kid. No. You know, Playmobil kid. I just I know I was my, my standard. I never met stuff. a Playmobil never... kid. There's like my therapist had him to play with and I was like, these are fucking weird. I don't what, like what, these. What were they? Like the Playmobil ones where they look like Legos but they're not. They're like the I I'm, I was never a Bill Okay, this is how lazy I was as a kid. I my, just wanted the figures. I never your, gave a your shit 80s, about the sets. Your 80s G.I. Joe stuff, <clears throat> I'd have someone else build it. I would literally pay a friend to build my shit. Wow. Because I'm like, yeah, get that running, and I'll be back with a Snickers bar and a five. You know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> build my shit. Because <laughs> I, you know, as, you know, now, as a child adult, I never open my toys, but... All right. Still a very avid buyer of toys. Uh, I wanted to actually uh, help myself out there with this. I wanted to mention Sideshow Collectibles real quick. Love them. They Expensive, are, but they, goddamn, they're good. I uh, I have a Jason from Part 6 of uh, Sideshow Collectibles. Nice. And, you know, you can take <clears> off his mask. He's got all the tools, and he's got the paintball marks in his, in his That's uh, awesome. shirt and shit. It's pretty cool. Well, I want to do. Uh, I'm actually going to let you take a look at it. I just pre-ordered a Jason they have on there. Really? Have you a peeky poo? It's uh, it's the only one on the site. Uh, he's two hundred something dollars. Yeah, that's about made, the price. They you're only made pay. a thousand of them, hmm. and he's from part three, and I it, it looks was, yeah. amazing. There's also, and it's shipping right now. If you guys have the cash flow, or if you're a Hellraiser fan, they've done a pinhead. Damn. That is now shipping. And I believe it's around the same price, a little over 200 bucks. I had a Freddy of theirs, too. It was just like Freddy from the first one. Uh, the only two things I currently own from Sideshow, I'm very happy with them. I have a Snake Plissken that awesome. they did, uh, which got caught up in that fucking... I, I Make a long story short, he got caught up in this uh, harbor war that was going on in Los Angeles. So my 
my figure was trapped in a shipping container for three months, which Damn, changed my looks, life. But anyway, that looks uh, incredible. And it comes with the fucking harpoon gun too. There's but, a couple shots of that. And the machete, I mean, look amazing. But. Damn. The other sideshow thing that I treated myself to, it was my Christmas present to myself last year, was a Marty McFly that they did. You showed me that. That's pretty pretty immaculate figure there. And I dropped, I, you know, I got a really good deal. You, and I'll tell you, if you guys are searching for some sideshow stuff, not trying to cut out sideshow any of this, you know, if you can buy it from them, great. But the stuff sells out pretty quick. Not all of us have that kind of fundage. If you want it, eBay has a lot of sideshow stuff. That's where I got mine because I got them just without the case. You know, I just wanted to pull Nice. Nice. To put up and you, know, and you can save some coin doing that, and you know it's. But yeah, the the there's some they have some really cool stuff. Uh, if you're a financially uh, capable uh, toy buyer, you've got to have some flow though. That shit's expensive, but uh, yeah, they make some nice shit. I used to have a pretty big collection of uh, sideshow classic horror stuff, and I had to sell a lot of it a few years ago. Uh, financially, because I uh, lost my job, but uh, yeah, they make some nice stuff, and definitely go check out the Jason, even if, just to look at it, it's badass, uh, it's from part three, and uh, doesn't say it's from part three, it's just what a nerd I am, you can tell it's from part three, um, it's it's definitely uh, a Richard Booker era of Jason, uh, but anyway, the pinhead's on there, and it's shipping too, and I'm pretty sure it's the same price, I'm not sure, my phone's dead, or I would... Give you guys that information that I do not have right now, but we're back to Adrian Barbeau and her big tits, <laughs> and she's broadcasting live from her big tits. Yep, and letting everybody know. And there <laughs> is the sheriff from Halloween. Yes, and Halloween too. You let him out <laughs> anyway. Very awesome. And there's the fog, kids. It's coming to get you at a theater near you. And that's in the film. His name is Dan O'Bannon, which is cool. Well, name drop to the alien creator, kids. Yep. And the guy that... And did Dark Star with John. He also did Return of the Living Dead. He did the... Yes, he did. Which is pretty cool. That's a Corey movie. Mm-hmm. Because Corey likes brains, and he's eating some right now before he goes to worky. <laughs> but, yeah. So, lemon meringue. Greek yogurt. Dr. Vincent West, 80s bowl cut is somewhere. I don't know where it is right now, but we are back to the sheriff from Halloween. He's here with uh, a gentleman at the radio station, it looks like. Or are they at... Pl- no, we're... I don't know where the hell we're at. I just got lost. All right. Anyway. That's what happens on the fog. Yeah, I got covered by it. <laughs> <clears throat> Fucking signs ooze water and catch so you've got So you've got a returning cast... Which is pretty impressive that John's just like, hey, you know, you guys want to do this next motherfucker with me? And they're like, yeah. Because yeah, a lot of people don't realize this, I don't think. Halloween was in the theater for like three fucking years. Right. That's a long time. If I'm not mistaken, it was still running. Actually, I know it was. It was still in the theater when this came out. Mm-hmm. So that's how much money that damn thing made. And you know, well, it's uh, too far gone. Anyway, I didn't know that the uh, Rob Bottin plays a character in this film. Are he you shitting? He plays a role. He's in this. He's in this. Okay, film. I never knew that. Which he does a special makeup effects for most of his shit. He does the thing, and you know, Rob Bottin's the fucking man. Uh, RoboCop Total Recall. Anyway, yep. but he's uh, yeah, and Legend. If you've ever seen Tim Curry's makeup in that movie. He did Fear and Loathing also, which is cool. Who is Rob in this film? Uh, it's a guy by the name of Blake. Okay, I never knew that. Rob Bottin, if you all are not familiar with him, is a special makeup effects artist uh, from the Stan Winston studio and probably Stan's prize student. Um, huge fan. Uh, lived on chocolate, coffee, and sodas when he was making the thing and damn near killed him. He's also, um, for the Star Wars sci-fi nerds, he was the guy behind the the creatures from the cantina in New Hope, and he was one of the uh, the cantina band members. He was the, the tallest one in the band. Right, and if we mention Rob, Rob, we, have to, we have cool. to mention Rob's boss, which was Rick Baker. Of course. He was a fucking legend. Yeah, they both American are. World in London, and that's all you need. Yep, there you go. And for Corey... The first Star Wars film. Anyway, 
He's a fucking badass, anyway. I mean, you, you see Chewbacca, then you see uh, it, it came to life. Not created, Bob, but it came to life because of uh, Rick Baker. Anyway, we're still with the sheriff, and he's talking to Adrian Barbeau and her beautiful breasts on the phone, so he can't see him like I can. But it's, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's great. This movie, every time I look over at the frame, it's like, wow, this looks fucking awesome. And the lighting's so good on this film, too, because you get your your eerie blues in there, and there's a lot of, like, dark reds for color in these films and in, the, in this film. And uh, it's just very eerie. It adds to the mood of the movie. So even though, you know, we always put these things on mute and we watch them and we, we bullshit and talk. Um, but this film is nice to, to look at and not even hear what's going on. I mean, they're, it just it, it looks great. The color's awesome. Uh, Screen Factory again. Always, you know, nailing it right out of the park. And it's, this is no, nothing short of that. It looks great. Of course, the fog is rolling in and it's all just fucking dark red lighting coming through and the the eerie blues as well. It's just a pretty cool uh, lighting in this scene. And there goes the sheriff. <coughs> he's getting hacked up by one of the pirates. He's getting choked out Michael Myers style in this. The fog has got him and... Uh... You let him out! <laughs> of course he's a doubter, and he's like, eh, some drunk asshole was talking about this a thousand years ago, and then boom. Let me take the phone off the hook, bye, run, you know, but, yeah. Uh-oh. It's one of those that... I still just think it's amazing to me. I brought this up a bunch. I'm sorry, kids, but... I love that he's just like, hey, come do this film with me, and they did. Yeah. I just think that's amazing. You never see that nowadays. No. You may see it on like some giant picture, like you know, a Star Wars or a Jurassic World or something like that. But to get a returning cast to a small, you know, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, for all these films, but you know, a lot of this, you know, directors and stuff where they have returning cast members is, you know, they they build a relationship with them to where you know they're comfortable around them. You know, I'm sure when you're acting, it's hard to. To work with pe- with a sure. lot of people, yeah. and uh, you're not comfortable working, you're just doing your job. And uh, with Carpenter and his crew, I mean, most of them must have grown a pretty, you know, had a pretty good relationship with him, and uh, enjoyed the way he did his work. So, uh, getting them back, they were probably honored to, and they enjoyed it. You know, especially people like Tom Atkins, you know, and uh, Jamie, and you know, I'm sure they love just returning to these films with them because. They know they're going to get a good movie out of it, and on top of that, they probably have a really good experience with it instead of it being um, just agonizing, you know. Give her, give Adrian Barbeau a call at five 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 two one three one if you know anything about the fog <laughs> or my eighties bowl cut. <laughs> well, they're shut down now because they're just the fog's destroying these fucking telephone poles. No, but her breasts are intact, Corey. Yeah. I'm very happy about that because she's very attractive in this movie. <laughs> I mean, those those are... Her breasts are uh, backup generators for the light, so <laughs> they'll be back on soon in a second. <clears throat> Swing by Antonio Bay if you get a chance, guys. Avoid the fog. Check out her tits. <laughs> and uh, if the power ever goes out, just... Just let Run her like know. hell. Just let her know, and she'll you know. Or hop or ride with Tom. <laughs> Tom Atkins will get you the fuck out of there. Yeah. Now they're going. They're just fucking assholes. The fog. They're just putting out all the electricity in this town. Antonio Bay is now the land you know because it's California you can't really tell what time of year it is for this either right. you want to say fall but maybe it's January it kind of looks like fall I don't know I don't know they're now having a candlelight service for my bowl cut I mean, you know it's cold because they're all wearing jackets and shit oh yeah man like I said northern California I mean it's that's no joke you can just tell it's cold I wouldn't go near that water for a lot of it's money just a 
great scene where they're showing the fog rolling in from the from the tide. It looks really awesome. I mean, again, this this film looks brand fucking new. It looks awesome. Well, she doing starting a fucking boat motor or something as a backup lighthouse generator. She started my motor at the beginning of the film. <laughs> my motor's been going. You don't need to restart it. <laughs> Unless, of course, you want to pull it for a little bit. I'm sorry for being so tacky today, kids. I can't help it. Anyway. <laughs> there I am. There is the return of the, of the Doctor's 80s bowl cut. Back to the bowl. <laughs> but no, it's, we're trying to kind of add a little humor with this today. This this movie is it is slow. No. If you watch it, it's very uh, atmospheric. It's not, you know, it's not very intense. So, Great film. Uh, we're just, we're, it's it, no, it's a, I love it, but we're trying to kind of lighten the mood with it today. It's a very down kind of somber film. It is. So I'm trying to kind of. <laughs> uh, I think it's working. Yeah, I'm just kind of trying to keep me and Mr. Gorecross going because we just got to do that. <laughs> we don't fall asleep and then there's no podcast. Mm. And there's the fog and it's coming after my bowl. <laughs> Adrian Barbeau was still trying to get the generator running, and she did. And thank God she just ran up those stairs. Yep, you got to see every every second of that. Of course, the Andy is the little boy's name that has my haircut. <laughs> um, Andy. Eighty-eight seven is the address if you want to save my bowl cut. <laughs> this film. It's also where the bowl cut was born and raised. The little kid's funny. Isn't that weird on on Twitter where it says someone follows you and then you can't find out where the fuck it happened? I have a lot of people that will... Do you ever get that? I'll have a lot of people that will follow me. By the way, you guys can follow me if you have any interest. Uh, I'm at Dr. Vincent West um, on uh, Twitter. I also have a Facebook page, which is linked to our Facebook page. And Corey is available on all social medias, as he is <clears throat> the gentleman behind... Our entire project. But anyway, <laughs> um, our Bill Gates, if you will, <laughs> our power source, our life's blood. Um, yeah, the fog's about to take out Granny. She's about to get smoked. Uh, but no, I have people, uh, back to what you were saying, I have people that will follow me. I don't follow them back, so then they delete me and then add me back to try to get me to do it again. I'm like, no, I'm not following your band or your whatever. I just don't. I don't like that. I don't do that to people. I don't like when people do that to me. Does it bother you when people are like, hey, you have to follow me too? It's like, I'm not doing that. Yeah. You can't just give me a follow if you want to see my stuff, but you know. Yeah. If you want to see that, man, hell yeah, we want you, but I can't you know, I have seen people on there. It's like, hey man, and they'll start messaging me. Hey, donate money to my my zombie project, and I'm like, uh, go fuck yourself. Huh. Not doing that. I don't ask for money. Uh, Mr. Gorkrise doesn't ask for money, so uh, this is all out of uh, our love for horror and death metal. So it's not a uh, we're not asking for funds for that uh, huh. from fans. I think it's tacky to get on there and ask people for money. You know, yeah. go to Kickstarter. I've already had my rant about that. Not going to do that today. Huh. Go to Kickstarter and beg for money. Don't ask us for money because we can't help you. <laughs> if you beg for your for money, all we can give you is. And that's what you'll get. You'll get some of the goriest gore crossed gas. <laughs> gore crap. In your face. <laughs> and in your mouth. And we're twelve. Good night. But no, I mean, I love, you know, want to react, you know, interact with people, but I can't, uh, I can't finance your zombie movie. It's just all this bullshit. Like I keep no. getting, it's like, and I just delete the messages. I don't even respond to it, but it's just, it's like, that's great. You're trying to do that, but don't beg me for money. It's like, I'm not on there asking you for money. Right. You know, I'm asking you to check out something that's fucking free by you clicking a goddamn button. <laughs> I'm not asking for cash. I didn't ask for your fucking your Visa logo gift card or your fucking you know 
your green your dot discover card. card yeah. yeah, I'm not asking for your American Express. No. Yeah. Gotta do it. The belt <laughs> Every time. <laughs> well, it had to happen, but I didn't. I kept Eventually, the liver under control. But now the fog is in as well because the fog is trying. Yeah, it to is in. Fuck up Jamie and little you and uh, like my shirt. It's after my and, and Tom. And they're, they're, and this is and they're just got out of the mud. Classic horror. You either car doesn't start or you get oh, stuck in the mud. Oh, there's Tom yeah. saved me. Yeah, he's, he's chilling. I think you'll be okay in the hands of Jamie and Tom. I, I see. So. <clears throat> the fog's like, oh damn it! And they're gonna let's reassemble as another mist and attack another car. Stevie <clears throat> Wayne, aka Adrian Barbo, <laughs> and Steamy Wayne. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <clears throat> and of course, Janet Lee again. You're amazing. You got hacked up in that shower. <laughs> But um, I don't know. John John's a huge Hitchcock fan, which I think is awesome. That is awesome. For him to do that, you know, just for him to put, because from my, my understanding, Jamie Lee just got it. You know, he's just like I'm putting you in here because you're her daughter, and right. I just think it's awesome, and it worked, and it made a lot of money, and Halloween, and yeah, she did a great job. And then he throws back to the very next film, and and throws her mom, and I think it's awesome, and that, that she did it, that she agreed to do it. It's fucking killer. It is. And it's... It's really fun. Uh, uh, side note, Jamie Lee Curtis fans out there, if you've never seen it, uh, Screen Factory also put this out. Terror Train is a great movie. That's the one with... Um, the, who's the killer guy in that movie? Uh, that movie. would be giving the entire film away. I uh, can man, if the, you want The guy, that, the actor that played him. Oh, uh, I don't know. David Copperfield's in it, though. That's it. Well, he's, he's not the... Right, but he's... Okay. Yeah, he is in it. I was thinking He'll of... He'll do some magic for you. <laughs> Do some but yeah, that movie's just good. That that is a magic. very bleak, awesome slasher. I really like that film. Um, Corey was actually going to pick up a copy of it recently, and it was missing the DVD because some asswad turned in the Blu-ray without the DVD with it. Which is yeah, usually what what happens. Um, which it should have been bought that way. <clears throat> anyway. uh, right now we're in a something you've not seen in this film yet. The actual city, which. Um, Antonio Bay, the fictitious Antonio Bay, where the fog is. It's pretty awesome. Very atmospheric, very cool. And uh, somehow my my bowl cut is still running from the fog, <laughs> thanks to Jamie Lee and and uh, the master uh, Tom Atkins, which I'm sure he's ready to yell at that to stop it. But. Hmm. Well, the Terror Train is a Canadian film. Yeah. There you go. By an Astral Films in Canada. That's how it was distributed. Of course, it was 20th Century Fox in the U.S., but it's pretty pretty cool. It's a good movie. I like it. <clears throat> and there's that cross again, which is still there. <laughs> In real life, if you go to where they shot this, that cross, <clears throat> unless something's changed in the last couple of years, it's still fucking there, which is awesome. It's covered up by woods and shit, but it's still there. Right. I'd love to just walk up and touch it. <laughs> Seriously, you know, it's but like, take a picture with yeah, it. Yeah, man. I mean, there it is again, and that fucking thing's awesome. Oh, uh, they go to the church because... Uh Father Malone's the one that knows about all this shit. Correct. He's like the, uh... Yeah, he's the... Well, they figure they're going to be safe in there because it's something, you know... Yeah, it's a church, but also world. this guy's like, you know, he knows about all this, you know, the reason why they're coming and all this shit. So... Now they're in their little safe house. For now. Just book. throwing shit in the church. That's Tom Atkins don't give a fuck, he kids. Doesn't. He don't give a fuck. Don't fuck with Tom Atkins. He really doesn't give a fuck. I guess he was trying to mess with the book. He's just like, fuck you. 
He just torches the book with a fucking, I guess, a wine bottle. I don't know what he just threw at it. Yeah, I'm not really sure what just happened either. It's in a church, so it's wine or liquor or something. It wasn't holy water, I don't think. And of course, Adrian's just like a, she like DJing. She is. She's the town DJ. And she does soft shit. rock. She's just like there's a station. In. And uh, she's just trying to help, you know. Trying to inform the public that uh, the fog isn't a normal fog. <clears throat> and she's starting to realize that it's uh, not of this world. So I mean, I, my whole thing would be to plead to her that's like, you know, the fog's coming, we're going to die. Right. Can I at least breastfeed? <laughs> Can I have my last supper, which is your giant tits and your sweet milk? <laughs> now we got everyone here we got Jamie we got Janet we got Hal and we got Tom and we got Dr. Bullcut so, I mean they're all here all our all our stars are in, in under one roof the kids there my hair is also there yep the doctor's hair And Adrian's tits are all the way in the lighthouse somewhere. I know. We're safe. Thank <clears> all God. by herself. For now. Well, the fog's creeping up. And one thing we've learned from this movie thus far is if you walk into the fog, you're not you're going to go right into it. You're not going to come back. No. And she's pretty damn close right now. She's uh, on the last steps of the lighthouse trying to uh, figure out what the fuck the fog is doing. She's noticing it's not any... So it's looking fog. for the sixth conspirator, which is Hal Holbrook. Yeah, which is uh, Father Malone here. He knows it. He knows they're coming for him. Yeah, he's trying to play stupid so he doesn't look like an asshole. Well, I'm in the hands of Jamie Lee right now. I'm doing good. Yep. All my bowl cuts thinking about is a hot dog. Maybe some ice cream. <laughs> Little six million dollar man. And then Tom's like, Stop it! <laughs> Get rid of it. Shit. A pretty cool scene right here where they're figuring out what the fuck's going on finally with this fog stuff. My fellow conspirators believe that the confiscated fortune has been stolen from them. When in fact, I am the thief and God's temple is the tomb of gold. I am the thief and God's temple is the tomb of gold. <laughs> Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Shit's hitting the fan. And John's hitting the keys. It's awesome. I figured we'd let you guys in on the... The climax yeah, here. Yeah. Here's the fog busting through the fucking windows. It's awesome. The stained glass church windows are now destroyed. By the hands of the of the dead. The pirate dead. Pirate dead. Which really since this movie hasn't been done, you know. Like Pirates of the Caribbean maybe, but and this ain't no fucking Disney film, you know what I mean? They don't have this ride over there. Now they got this giant gold cross they just busted out of the wall of the church. Which I don't think it's going to help unless they're. If you're just... all wondering what's going on with my bowl cut right now, tree scared. <laughs> uh, the hairs in the back of his bowl cut are standing up right now. <laughs> They're going to give him their little gold cross. He's got to fucking hold that thing with his chin. It's so goddamn huge. Oh, the cross has got to be too, which is vulgar. And when John wrote that scene, he was like, yeah, that'll offend some people. Let's do it. Let's knock that cross off the fucking wall. And you can't have a 
John Carpenter movie without John Carpenter music. It's simple, but it's so fucking effective that it's it's genius. And there they are. There's my T-shirt. <laughs> And this is Rob Boutine right here coming up. Blake. He's Blake in this film. That's right. That's why you can tell he's a big, he's a tall motherfucker, Rob Boutine. And that's him right there. He's like the, the main pirate, I guess the, the captain or whatever he, he used to be. Of course, Adrian, Adrian's just on top of the, the lighthouse trying to get away from the fog. She was on top of me. Right. And notice the top of the lighthouse looks like a giant tit. You can see that clinging onto the nipple there. Yep, that's Rob Boutine in that, in that uh, dead pirate costume. Which is pretty cool when you can make your own costume like that. And, and wear it in a film and not be a cosplayer. That's crazy. Not I be considered a cosplayer. <laughs> yep, that's him in that suit. Because that's actually how tall he is. He's a, he's a big dude. I'm alone. Damn, that cross must be real heavy. Shit has hit the fan on this. It actually looks like a fog's rolling in outside. It's pretty pretty dark outside. <laughs> and there goes Adrian. She got stabbed. She's not out of the down for the count yet. Yeah. Awesome. It's the first time you actually see one of their faces is just seaweed muck with maggots. They're just rocking out to this shit. is uh, burning bright. Very bright. And there goes Blake. He's getting fucked back to his own dimension. some cursed fucking gold. Most crosses are. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, you just turn that big cross into a fucking nuclear warhead and just the fog rolled out. So I'll tell you what happened. Uh, basically, Father Malone was the whole reason the fog came out was to reclaim their stolen gold which was melted and forged into this giant Chaining ass cross bowl. <laughs> so he gave the cross back and now they're gone supposedly and Tom Atkins didn't have to slap a bitch so that's good Adrian. Embassy Pictures Adrian was alive. later bought by MGM. Right. And that's how they own all this stuff. But these prints of these, though, man, somebody took care of these. These were not treated like shit, like that's a good. lot of prints from a big company that I won't mention, Universal, uh, <laughs> that doesn't take care of their prints. Right. Or Sony, you know. 
Yeah, well, we could do an entire podcast on a damaged film that you love. Ha! <laughs> and yeah, we won't get into that. It's for a whole other thing. But we should. But we should. Maybe the next episode. Well, we'd need a lot of time to do that one. Yeah. No, I'd say we'll wind this one up here, but uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in this week, and uh, hopefully uh, bigger things to come in these next few weeks for you guys. Uh, we're going to get some stuff set up, so uh, make things more exciting for the listeners. Thanks for the early support, and keep it coming. We'll keep cranking these out. And, I mean, just do what we do, watch horror movies and listen to death metal, and we hope that's what you remain doing as well and stay true and uh any closing notes for the doctor yeah i want to if it's okay i'm gonna ride this scene out here with him this is it tried to destroy us in one moment it vanished but if this has been anything but a nightmare and if we don't wake up to find ourselves safe in our beds it could come again to the ships at sea who can hear my voice. Look across the water into the darkness. Look for the fog. <laughs> well, this is the climax of the movie right here. Yeah. Got Father Malone, he's uh, relieved. But should he be relieved? I mean, he still stole gold, and uh, his ancestors stole. So will he pay right here? I don't know. Yeah. And the fog rolls it back in. Fog isn't gone. It's going after Father Malone here. Now they're just not fucking with everybody else. They got to take him. And they're all back. Yep. There's Blake. Look for the fog, kids. Yeah.